Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to see you today. Thank you for being with us. I'm Dina Potestio, Vice President for Advancement here at Toro. Today we have friends joining us live on YouTube as well as on Zoom and in person. So again, welcome. We, we love having you with us. Thank you. In the most simple terms, the discovery we're announcing today made by Dr. Aurelio Larico and his team of international collaborators tells a new story, a brand new story about how a virus enters a cell and then replicates. This is a novel discovery. It's an entirely new pathway that Dr. Larico and his team have, that Dr. Larico and his team have discovered, as well as uh, putting together drugs that block the replication. Dr. Larico first found the pathway when a cancer researcher. We're very proud that the prestigious journal Nature Communications has published this research, specifically related to the HIV virus. But it's important to know again that Dr. Larico first found this while studying cancer. You'll learn more about this today. On the panel today is, of course, Dr. Larico, as well as campus president and provost, Dr. Andrew Priest. I'd like you to know that Toro is Nevada's largest medical school. For more information about the discovery, you can visit hivinvasion.org. I'd like to sincerely thank the trustees of the Ingolstadt Foundation for their generous support of our research endeavors. The Ingolstadt Research Complex for Human Performance Research and Biomedical Research here at Toro is doing great things for humanity. We want to tell this story far and wide, and we thank you for sharing it. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Andrew Priest. Thank you, Dina. Um, this is really a neat day for us, uh, a thrilling day, actually, uh, to have Dr. Lorico and his team uh, published in Nature Communications. Um, what, what is really, really fantastic about this is, and, and you'll explain this much better than I can, but you get HIV into, into the bloodstream from whatever person or however they got infected. And the, the HIV goes into the cell and it, it captures the mechanisms of the cell and creates a freeway or a pathway into the nucleus. And then the HIV goes into the nucleus and takes over the mechanism, hijacks it, creates more HIV, spreads it out and, and, and spreads the infection, makes it worse. What Dr. Lorico and his team have found, and you'll fix me if I'm wrong here, is they found not only, they found the pathway, which is, which was, is newly discovered, but they've also found a molecule that, or a drug that blocks that pathway. So it's like they're plugging up the, the tunnel so that the, the, the virus can't get into the nucleus, can't reproduce, and, it, and it, it can stop the sickness or reduce the intensity of the sickness. Uh, the, the caveat here is that this has been done in mice and we believe that it will be possible to be done in humans as well. So that's the next level. The other really cool thing about this is that pathway not, doesn't just work for HIV. If, if someone has cancer in one part of the body and that cancer gets into the bloodstream and say goes to the lung and it wants to metastasize into the lung, this pathway has this drug has the potential of blocking that pathway so that the cancer cell can't go say to the lung from another part of the body and become metastatic cancer which is which is deadly uh, so that's a possibility he also has a team working on cytomegalovirus that uses the same pathway as hiv so there's a lot of potential there's a lot of more research that needs to be done and uh with that I want to turn time over to Dr. Larico, who much better than I can uh, explain what you're talking about. It's been amazing. <laughs> it's been an amazing description. <laughs> I can't add much more. Um, I, I definitely would like to um, acknowledge that I'm here as, a, a, as, as the leader of, of a team of, of international collaborators, in particular, uh, uh, Dr. Denis Corveil, who is in Dresden, but he's also an adjunct here. And uh, for the past eight or 10 years, we've been uh, talking every day. We've been planning experiments together. Dr. In a, we need to have you speak up a little bit. In a, in a, very, um, in a very collegial way. And uh, in particular, the first author, Mark Santos, who has been very resilient in carrying out most of the experiments and, uh, and uh, bringing this work to completion. 
Uh, of course. Dr. Lirka, I'm so sorry. We're yes. having trouble hearing you. Yes. So we're going to adjust your mic. My apologies. AV team, shall I move his microphone up? One second. Okay. Little technical difficulty. We'll get it fixed. <laughs> it's too important not to hear. Yes, it's too important not to hear for the audience. Uh, someone who just said that. In fact, I can exchange microphones if we need to. Okay, excuse me for just a second. Sure. In fact, Dr. Larico, would you like to follow me and we'll, sure. we'll get you hooked up? Is it better? Can you hear better? A little better. Just speak as loud as you can. I will try. Your kids and you're yelling at us. Yeah. I will try. Uh, so I, I just acknowledged the members of the team, an international team that involves also the um, um, the College of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, Turo College of Osteopathic Medicine in New York, the University of Dresden, Denis Corbeil, already mentioned, and uh, the University of Palermo in Italy, chemists that have uh, uh, synthesized the drugs. Um, apart from the scientists, uh, we were able to do this discovery because uh, of uh, the support from administrator, the, the president uh, uh, on my right, uh, Andrew Priest, and uh, uh, the Vice Provost uh, Laura Javitz, uh, the Dean Gilliard, and uh, the Chair of Basic Science, Emmett Findlay, and the great support from uh, the, President, the Vice President of Advancement, Dina Potestio. Um, another uh, thank goes to people that are no longer with us, but have had a, a great uh, impact in uh, developing the research, in pushing the research to um, higher levels. I mean, Shirley Berkeley that has secured funding, has been a big supporter of research, has been the previous provost, Ray Holden, that got us the instruments, the initial instruments that were required for this study. And uh, the, um, the previous, uh, um, uh, the previous uh, um, uh, director of uh, um, uh, Our chief research the officer, chief research officer it's previous chief research officer, <laughs> um, uh, Cheryl Vanier, uh, who has uh, um, very unselfishly uh, for many years uh, developed the Department of Research and uh, um, has allowed um, the, the infrastructure that is needed from a small university like ours to do um, big discoveries. So apart from, from, from the, what is uh, due as, uh, as thanks to the support that we have had, um, the importance of this research uh, in uh, simple terms is that uh, for uh, AIDS to develop, the HIV virus has to bind to two types of cell, but the main type of cell is a T lymphocyte, a CD4 positive T lymphocyte. There is a molecule on the surface, it's called CD4. The virus binds to it, and it can go in in two ways. Either it fuses and goes in, or it goes into a bus that we call endosome. And we assimilate to a bus because it takes the virus around the cell. But the virus has to go into the nucleus because it needs to replicate. And so what uh, is very exciting that we have discovered is that the virus is able to tell the cell to form highways that go into the nucleus. And so it encapsulated in the bus and now has told the cell to create these nuclear highways and go into the nucleus to the point where it needs to be for replicating and giving the infection. So this is the first discovery, which is a biological discovery. Um, we have been working on this for eight years. So we have had the time to move into part two. And part two is finding the molecules, the proteins that allow this. So this protein are three proteins. One protein is on the bus. One protein is on the highway. And the third protein puts everything together and moves the bus into the highway. Now this third protein, which is not very well known, is crucial because we have discovered that if we block this protein, we can block the entry of the virus into the nucleus. And so 
Part three is that we have done molecular modeling. So we have tried to understand how to block specifically this protein. And we have designed and synthesized specific drugs that block this process. So now when we give this drug to T lymphocytes that are infected by the HIV virus, the virus is no longer able to get into the nucleus and to replicate. So the bus is not able to form highways and get into the highways. And this may be a breakthrough in uh, uh, at least in the development of a new class of uh, antiretroviral anti-AIDS drugs. Apart from this, I'm, a, a, as, uh, as Dina mentioned, a cancer researcher. So I, I stumbled into virology because uh, originally I was studying extracellular vesicles. Those are billions of small bags, almost invisible, that are very important because the cells communicate by producing billions of these vesicles and sending messages to other cells. What I was very interested in is that cancer cells produce billions of these vesicles that go to normal cells and hijack them and, and force them to help them, to help them to defend the, the cancer growth from the immune system, uh, to have uh, nutrients, to have uh, growth factors that allow the cancer cells to grow. But this occurs especially at the metastatic site. So let's imagine a breast cancer cell that forms a local tumor, then the cells reach the, um, the lung, and uh, at this point, they have to grow and they need to recruit the normal cells to be helped. Well, this happens through these extracellular vesicles. And these extracellular vesicles have to get into the nucleus of the normal cells. And now they use this pathway that I've described for the virus. And now the drugs can block this pathway and prevent the vesicles from the cancer cells to go into the normal cells so that the metastasis no longer grows. And we are. Uh, we are developing these studies with another collaborator in Italy, Goffredo Arena, who is a surgeon that trained in McGill University. And together we've been brainstorming how to do this. And we believe that these drugs have the potential to be anti-metastatic drugs. Why is this important? Because cancer patients in 90% of cases, when things go bad, they do not succumb because of the local tumor that can be removed surgically or can be irradiated. But that's because they form metastasis in lung, liver, brain. And this metastasis spread throughout the body and in some cases cause patient death. So if we can develop a therapy against metastasis, that would be a huge uh, advantage. And these, cell, these drugs have the potential of blocking viruses in cancer. You can ask why. There is a reason. The, Viruses, retroviruses like HIV, but other viruses as well that need to replicate in the nucleus are very similar to extracellular vesicles. They have the same size, they have the same surface. That's why viruses and extracellular vesicles released by cancer cells follow the same path and go to the nucleus. And that's why we can now block them, at least in our preliminary studies. This is not all. There are other diseases that utilize the same pathway. We know that Alzheimer, there is a protein, it's called tau, another protein is called amyloid. They are very important for the development of Alzheimer. We have just discovered that, and we're not published that, it's not part of this paper, but stems from the same observation that is in nature communication. Now the tau protein, the tau protein also follows this pathway, also follows this highway, also gets into the nucleus, and the drug block that as well. So, we don't have a cure for these diseases, but we have a new mechanism. We have new molecules, new proteins that are targets and new drugs. And we need to explore this and see where, where we can go. Now, one thing that is very dear to my heart is not only the science beam, but how we have been able to move forward with these breakthroughs in, in a small university that is doing whatever it can to become a research university, but of course right now is not Yale or Harvard. And I think uh, it's very beautiful to say that we have been working for many years, five years at Turo and even longer with my collaborators uh, in a way that is a little different from what happens very often in academia. So instead of thinking about career 
and uh, money and grants and the competition, we have moved into collaboration. So we work together for science, for medical care, for breakthroughs, without thinking about uh, all the obstacles that uh, um, are usually coming from um, a, a, an excessive interest for, for uh, our own career. And uh, even uh, we, have, we had to patent these drugs. And when we decided to patent these drugs, I decided to spread the patent to all, um, to all the inventors, all, all the people in my team. And uh, um, even using part of this percentage for uh, hiring an IP, an intellectual property company in England, so that they could protect and develop this patent so that in the future we can have drugs in the clinic. And this has worked very well because people understand when you are doing this for science and not for personal gain. Just to conclude um, this, this, this thing, um, I, I think this discovery um, can be assimilated to the uh, battle between good and evil. So this process that we've discovered is a good process. It's something that allows cells to communicate between them. But then comes evil which is the virus, which is cancer. So the virus tricks the system. And instead of having regular extracellular vesicles that go and do things probably during the embryogenesis, so probably a process that starts before the baby's born. Now the virus sees this thing and thinks I can fit in here and now I can give a viral disease, AIDS, other diseases. Cancer cells do the same. We can resurrect this pathway, we can increase this pathway and now be able to go to the nucleus and convince the cells to allow us to grow and form metastasis and kill the patient. So there is good, which is a normal process and there is bad and there is evil. And uh, um, somehow I'm really thankful to God. Um, well, apart from uh, my personal, uh, personal things and my, my four wonderful children, but I'm really get, grateful to God because has allowed us to open a window, a microscopic window and see what's happening in terms of nuclear entry. You have to think that nucleus is, a, is the brain of the cell. So the idea that we can see what's happening inside the nucleus, inside the brain of the cell is amazing. We've been able to visualize that. We've been able to understand how to block it. And uh, I think, that um, this has um, a huge potential um, because it's new, because it's something that doesn't build on previous knowledge, but it's something that opens a new, as I said, window where not only us, but all other, many other groups in, in the world uh, can join in this battle against diseases. So if we now have this window open, this shows that good is prevailing over evil because knowing this pathway, knowing what's happening, now we can block evil and restore the process in what is good for, for humanity. Wow. So we're ready to take questions and I'm not sure, is my mic working? It is, okay, very good. So <laughs> questions from the audience. So, those of us in the not in the medical field, it might be a bit complicated. So what you explain, can you explain for a little bit more simple way so that people can understand? Yes. So the paper itself is on virus, especially on a virus, HIV. So HIV enters the bloodstream, as uh, our president said very well, and from the from the from the bloodstream has to enter into cells, and especially in cells that are called the T lymphocytes in the blood. So to do that, it binds on the surface and goes in. Now, when we found that it can go in in two ways, but what is really important, it goes into a bus. We call it an, scientifically endosome, but you have to think about a bus that now contains the virus. While it's doing that, the virus convinced the cell to create nuclear highways, nuclear freeways. They really are produced in the few minutes of the infection. So now the virus is in a bus and has created this, a road and highway where the virus in the bus can penetrate and reach the target in the nucleus. Why is this important? Because the virus, the HIV needs to replicate. 
And from one virus, you get a billion viruses, and then you have the overt disease. This is the first discovery. The second discovery is that these processes require interaction of proteins. And this becomes a little more complicated. I'm not telling you the names of these proteins because it's too complicated. But there are three proteins that are very important for this. One protein is on the bus. One protein is on the nucleus, is on the, on the highway. And another protein puts everything together. And now we can go with a drug that we've synthesized and target that middle protein where disrupts this, this pathway and we, we no longer the HIV can enter the highway and get into the nucleus. So the HIV remains in the cytoplasm, remains outside the nucleus and does not proliferate and does not cause the disease. So this is the, the, what we call a breakthrough in virology or at least in HIV AIDS. What is more complicated is explain this for cancer. And this is not in the paper, but the fact that now Nature Communications has vetted and accepted this study. Now we have a proof that this is true and our studies that are still ongoing are true that this process is also used by cancer cells to form metastasis. Not through viruses, but through other entities that are bags that are produced by the cancer cells and they have to go into the nucleus of other cells, we call them fibroblasts or mesenchymal stem cells, that or immune cells that need to help the cancer cell to grow in the lung or in other organs of metastasis. So now we have the virus that goes in and we block it and doesn't go into the nucleus. And then we have these extracellular vesicles produced by the cancer cell that we block and cannot go into other cells, normal cells of the body of the lung that are required to help cancer cells to grow. So we disrupt this mechanism and metastasis we hope metastasis cannot be formed. This is early to, to demonstrate it, it's a hope. But the good thing of this is that while usually therapies are directed to a specific type of cancer, the metastatic process is common to every type of cancer. So breast cancer, melanoma, brain cancer, they all cause metastasis. So if we have a drug that can block metastasis, that would be a drug that has potential anti-cancer in many types of cancer. And I would stop here and would not go into neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. But the, the idea is that we have demonstrated that this happens for a virus. And if you look at what extracellular vesicles look like, they are almost identical. They both are small bags, same size. One has the, the genes of the HIV virus. One has other genes that cancer uses to hijack and recruit normal cells. So two processes completely different but we've opened this window. We now can see what's happening in the nucleus and how these imaginations are formed, these highways. And now we have drugs that can block it. I don't know if it's in more simple. Words, if I can, I'm, not, I'm not a scientist, I'm a clinician. You're, you've been able to figure out how the virus or in another disease, the cancer spreads into the, into the cell, gets into the nucleus, and you've been able to figure out how to block that on-ramp or block that highway yes. so they can't get in there. And if they don't get in there, they can't reproduce and become uh, overtly clinically present. Yes. Yes. Doctor, how long have you been in research in this study? So this, this, the study on viruses, on HIV, has been six years. The study on this pathway, uh, so on these uh, highways that are formed and the bus that goes in has been eight years. I've been in cancer research for uh, 40 years. And then what does that mean for the, in the future of a hospital or a medical field? What is the, what's the study future like? So usually when you have a discovery like the, the highways that are formed, that's very far from the clinic, right? Because first you have to find this new biological process. And then you have to find the, the proteins, that the molecules that do that. And then you have to understand how to block this. We have been working under the radar, um, not because we were hiding things, because we don't hide anything. It's just because people were not taking us seriously. So we've been doing this work for six, eight years. So we have gone from step to step, from the biological mechanism to the molecular mechanism to the production of drugs. So we are already we already have a lot of drugs, and some of them work in experimental system. We need enough financial support for quickly 
finishing the studies, understanding more, testing other diseases, other types of cancer, other types of viruses, and see where it's, it's easier to have a, a clinical impact and then bring the drugs into the clinic. So having approval of the drugs and then testing the drugs in clinical trial, phase one, two, three, and so on. And so on. How long do you think in years that might take? To have a, a therapy, assuming that all this works, to have a therapy for patients, it, it's certainly not gonna be less than two or three years, probably more. But that's still not too far, considering that we have discovered not a new drug, but a new biological process. We have a window where we can see something new that was not described before. We actually gave a name to this bus going into vagination. We called it spatasome from the Greek or Latin spata, spati for sword, because this looks like sword that go into the nucleus and the bus is elongated. So it looks like a sword in its cupboard. So this spatasome that we've discovered is something that was not known before. And uh, uh, the molecules that do this have never been discovered before. And the drugs are new. They've been, synthesized, they've been designed and synthesized. So there is a lot of progress already made and the clinical translation is still far, but it's not as far as if we have only discovered the biological process. So Rico, what? Could this have meant for the pandemic? So this is a great question. The, the question is, what could this have meant for the pandemic if we weren't able to hear? Please. So the, the SARS-CoV-2, the agent of COVID, is a, one of the, I would say, few viruses that do not need access to the nucleus. So if the next pandemic is a virus that needs to go to the nucleus, this may be extremely useful because these are not vaccines, these are drugs that can block the entry into the nucleus. So we already know this works for HIV and that's the topic of the paper. We have unpublished data that it works for other viruses. For SARS-CoV-2, we don't expect it to work, although we should try because SARS-CoV-2 replicates in the cytoplasm. Most viruses replicate in the nucleus. So for those replicating in the nucleus, we're studying if they follow this path and then we already know that at least for another virus, we can block this path. They go in this path and we can block it. So if the next pandemic is a virus that goes into the nucleus, I think this may be very useful. Other questions? Yes. Dr. Liana. Thank you so much for your, for your hard work for the past 40 years plus. Um, so in the molecular modeling of the medications that you did, Create. Were you seeing viral decrease in the viral load, or were you seeing complete eradication of the HIV virus, or what was the outcome of those? These are studies that we are doing right now in collaboration with George Mason University. A dear colleague that is a virologist, Fataka Shanshi, is currently studying this in in vivo system, and we have um, positive preliminary results, but they are preliminary. As you understand, this type of studies are very complicated and uh, we need to repeat them and repeat them and understand what is going on and all the different implications of all the molecules that are involved. You have no idea, a small virus, how many things can do and how it's fooling. A small virus completely fools a cell. Imagine a virus that goes into a cell and tells the cell, you make highway for me because I need to go into the nucleus and then slips into the highway and goes where it needs to go. That's a very small entity that is able to do that. And the fact that now we can see this puts us in a position where not only our group, but our collaborators, we have now a lot of collaborators all over the world, but other groups that are independent, because science is for everybody, they can jump in and add to this and move the, the, move the, the whole topic forward. That's what we aim. We don't wanna keep the science with us. The virus can't get in and replicate. You think that the viral load would be diminished. We, we have preliminary evidence that it does for sure. I, I guess one of the big questions in HIV and AIDS, whether we can get a cure, because there are different problems in AIDS, right? One is that we have several drugs, but the patient very often becomes resistant. It's called cross resistance. So um, if you have categories of drug, then you have to use another category of drug. Well, this is a new category of drug. So this is not gonna be cross resistant to the drugs that we have. So this is good for cross resistance. Um, the other problems is the um, 
the, the toxicity of the, of, the, uh, of the drugs. And we don't know the toxicity. We have preliminary evidence that these drugs are not toxic at all, but this is preliminary evidence. So this may help in the future having a drug that is less toxic uh, with time on AIDS patient. The third problem is the cure. Can these drugs added to the current armamentarium of, of drugs help achieving a cure? We don't know. We have, we have no idea at this time and we will enlist other um, experts because again, I'm not a virologist myself. I had to reinvent myself as a virologist to carry this research forward. Um, so we are a team, we want to expand, we want to expand the collaborations. I think if we work together, we can move this, these things um, further, very, very much faster than just working alone. That, that's the whole point of disseminating this, uh, this, this knowledge because we are, we are completely submerged by, by information. And uh, uh, if this information is not picked by the media and reaches scientists and achieves um, financial support, investors and things like this, we cannot move uh, as fast as we could. So this is very important, the interaction of uh, scientists administrators and press so that um, other groups can hear about that and jump in and help. Other questions? Do we have any questions from Zoom? No questions from Zoom, okay. So the, you made a significant discovery, but I'm sure this is study is not done yet. Are you still easily studying? We are, we are still working a lot and we have a lot of enthusiasm because uh, this is so new. Um, that uh, we, we, we are collaborating with another institute of the Lovelace, uh, the Lovelace Institute that just joined the Turo system. And what we are looking at is another paradigm, is actually growth factors. So there is a growth factor that there is 11 drugs in the clinic in cancer that are used, they target this growth factor, it's called epidermal growth factor. We are looking at how this growth factor goes into the nucleus because it does go into the nucleus. And guess what? We have found that it does go through this pathway. So now we have even another, another road that we are doing collaboration with other experts because this pathway is important also for something else. Um, so we are full of excitement. Uh, we want to um, focus on HIV and cancer right now, but there are other diseases that, especially in collaboration, can, 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 can move the field forward. So we are trying to go as fast as we can, but the biological knowledge, the pharmacological knowledge, right now uh, at uh, John Hopkins, we just sent our drug. They're testing the drug to understand what happens in a live system, which is called pharmacokinetics. These are data more, very important to move the drug in the future into the clinic. So we sent the drug to John Hopkins. They've been very nice to test it for us because we cannot do everything here. Um, we, we don't have a thousand labs like John Hopkins. So you, you have the drug at Johns Hopkins. You've got it at George Mason, George I've Mason, and you've got it at the Lovelace it, Institute in Albuquerque. Lovelace Institute. We've got it at Turo University, uh, um, New York. We have, we've got it in Italy. We've got it, we collaborate with this uh, amazing surgeon, Goffredo Reina in Italy, uh, that works on metastasis. We just published a, a review uh, with, you, with him in, on, on Dresden Dresden in Germany. University yeah. of Dresden so. in Germany. Uh, so we, 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 uh, we are trying to, uh, to move the science forward as, as, as fast as possible uh, without rushing into um, ex um, excessive expectations. So this is still in the, in the, in the, in the state of development. Uh, this is something new. Uh, the exciting thing is that it's like finding a new organelle in the cell. We actually defined it as an organelle, this bus going into the invagination. We even defined it as an organelle, it gave a name of spatasome. So you understand that when something new is found in the cell, this opens a million new possibilities, and especially in, in, in disease, in disease states. And it seems to be very important in a lot of disease states. So we, we don't know where this is going and we will not do everything here, we will, uh, spread the information as we do for nature communication and hope to have other, um, other investigators jump in and give us a hand. Very good. I'd like to thank everyone again for coming. We're, as you can see, very excited about today's announcement. 
And again, if you go to hivinvasion.org, you will find our contact information if you have additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.